Hi, welcome back to another video, and in this one we're going to be talking about Grid, um, both Grid 2019 and the upcoming Grid Legends. Now, in past videos I have said that I wasn't planning on getting Grid at launch, um, but I do not have good willpower when it comes to racing games. So, yes, I, I've pre-ordered it. I, I know, I know, let's put my hands up on that one, but I've pre-ordered it. So. As I have, I wanted to um, look back, first of all, at Grid 2019. Um, and I went back and I reviewed the videos I put out around the time, and to a large degree, I still stand with what I, I put in those. Now, for the sake of transparency, I've actually played Grid 2019, both originally on PS4, PS4 Pro, and um, I at some point, I noticed, picked it up on Steam. I would imagine in a Steam sale, dirt cheap, or it may have been part of a Humble Bundle. I honestly don't remember, is the truth around that. So I basically had a completely unplayed copy of Grid on Steam, so I thought I'd fire it back up and see what it was like approaching it and I think pretty much exactly the same cycle happened from when I played it at launch back in 2019 which is as far as an arcade racer goes it's a good fun solid title it's got very rubber bandy AI it's got very aggressive AI um, it's very Hollywood in its portrayal of racing um, so lots of crashes lots of action etc etc um, and given the fact that all the DLC is with that version, um, it, it doesn't feel as content light as it did at first launch. So, you know, it, it was a bit better in that regard. Um, and as I was playing through it, I was kind of like, mm, maybe I was wrong about this. Maybe it's not as bad as I remember. Um, but here's the problem with Grid 2019. And with the DLC, it's, it's not content. It's not even that there's not a lot to do it's just there is very little point in doing a great deal of it um, the progression's fairly slow and all it really does is on unlock stuff for the sake of unlocking it there is no real progression um, and that may sound a little odd and a little ironic given that most of the pure sim racing titles for want of a better way of describing them that I um, entertain myself on, you know, AMS2, Project Cars, Assetto Corsa, have either no um, career mode or career structure to speak of at all, or a very light and pointless one that actually makes Grid 29 look in depth. Um, and yeah, that is ironic, but what they've got is a real depth of the physics and handling model around them that makes up for that, for me anyway. Um, Grid 29 hasn't got anything like that. Yes, there is, you know, from an arcade point of view, a bit of depth to the physics, but we're not talking a full blown sim here. We are till, still talking about something that is very, very, very firmly in the arcade genre. And nothing wrong with that, it's enjoyable, but what you end up with is a racing title that is, well, it's a lot like eating takeaway food, I suppose, is the best way to describe it, in that while you're doing it, and in small doses, it, it's damn good fun, and it doesn't do you any harm whatsoever. Um, but the second you try sustaining yourself long term on it, it just starts getting very shallow and very empty and you get the feeling that you could probably be off doing better things with your time. Um, and that still resonates because when I first played Grid 2019 and put out my initial impressions video, it was kind of like, yeah, this is great fun, absolutely loving it. And about a week later, it was kind of like, yeah, but there's not really a lot drawing me back to keep playing it. And, and that feeling still remains with Grid 2019. So on to the upcoming Grid Legends. Now Grid Legends it builds quite clearly on the look and feel of 2019, it really does, um, but it's expanded in terms of the vehicle range, there's a lot more vehicles in there, um, so I think as compared to about the 70 odd at launch on 2019 there's going to be over 100 at launch um, 
for Legends. You've then got tracks. Now, Silverstone is absent, but a lot of old favourites and some new stuff is heading um, our way with Grid Legends. Um, in particular, Otakama, which I, for a fantasy track, is one of my personal favourites, not just in the Grid series, but full stop. It's a great little track. It's really nicely laid out, lots of variants, and of course it does also come with the sprint versions, which effectively are Toku tracks, um, and really well done ones at that, so I'm glad to see that back in there. It seems, as is not uncommon for a grid title, um, to be fairly heavy on the city circuits, which is kind of to be expected, but there's a lot of um, new stuff coming with this as well. So you've got the drop-in multiplayer, online multiplayer, which is going to be interesting to try, where um, when you're racing online in Grid Legends, it's always a full grid because anything that isn't filled with human opponents um, on the internet uh, racing against you is filled with AI bots. And somebody can join a race mid-race and they will effectively take over one of the AI um, slots. Uh, and also, if they decide to rage quit, exactly the same thing will happen. The vehicle will not disappear. It will be taken over by a bot. So it will be interesting to see how that works. Um, and you technically can race online against nobody else because AI will fill the entire rest of the grid for you if you want. And you then can gradually fill it up as the race goes through. So it will be very interesting to see how that goes. Um, but the main change is around the actual story for the single player. Now while there was virtually nothing other than who you're starting at the bottom try and reach the grid world championship and win it um, with really only voiceovers at the start of the race to drag you along which most people I would imagine did the same as me which is just skip straight past them. Um, we've got a return to the grid and race driver series of old uh, mechanism which is a a story of an up-and-coming driver. You are the unnamed unvoiced driver 22 so you can imprint yourself on it is the idea behind that. Um, and it's not done via cutscenes, it's done via um, green screen technology similar to what's been used on the likes of The Mandalorian. Um, so it looks very, very convincing, but apparently can be done on a reasonable budget, being perfectly honest. The story is a bit cheesy, but it is very Drive to Survive, the um, Netflix Formula One documentary series for those of you who've watched that. So I think it will be full of the kind of um, drama and intrigue and rivalries that are full of that. Now, now, I have watched some of the footage um, on YouTube around this, and I must confess, at first I was quite sceptical about the entire thing. Um, but having watched it, it, it's cheesy looking in the right kind of good cheesy, if you get what I mean. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't think it's going to appeal to everybody, but um, yeah, it's, it's intriguing enough, and... Uh, in a funny way, I'm actually quite looking forward to it. It's going to be a tight win, though, because um, if I remember correctly, it comes out on something like the 24th of February, and then exactly a week later, Gran Turismo 7 drops. So it's dropping into an aggressive window, so it'll be interesting to see how it performs off the back of that. But I'll have, a, have to hammer it for about a week before um, I get engrossed in Gran Turismo 7, but yeah, I'm, I'm actually kind of looking forward to it now, so after saying I wasn't going to pick it up at launch, I've done a complete 180 on that. So that's my thoughts on Grid 2019 and the upcoming Grid Legends. If you found this interesting in any way, please do hit the like button, and if you want to see more content like this, please do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when new videos get uploaded. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye.